The coronavirus pandemic, which started in South Africa around March 2020, was the first global outbreak since the Spanish flu in 1918. While it was, in the first instance, a public health emergency, it also had serious economic, social, political, legal and governance consequences for South Africa and the world. The sheer scale, systemic nature, long duration and extreme uncertainty of the pandemic's effects have been unprecedented in recent decades. We'll explore the underlying economic drivers and how they interact to transform a health crisis into an economic crisis, with devastating loss not only of livelihoods, but of lives. South Africa felt both the direct and indirect international economic impacts of the pandemic early on. The direct international effects of the pandemic manifested as populations of various countries contracted the disease placing huge pressure on health systems and reducing labour productivity. Regrettably, the global death toll has continued to mount. Companies' production of goods and services was reduced, undermining the cash flow, solvency, profitability, corporate savings and investment, and disrupting global value chains. As a result of illness and death, households lost income, sometimes temporarily and sometimes permanently, which in turn reduced household consumption and savings, depressing aggregate demand. The direct health consequences of the pandemic therefore created both supply and demand side shocks to economies around the world. There were also indirect international health effects, as health systems in some countries were overwhelmed. COVID-19 patients flooded health facilities, crowding out treatment of other illnesses and thereby creating other health impacts, often no less severe than the pandemic itself. People with other ailments also failed to seek medical care timelessly because of fear of infection. Governments around the world nearly simultaneously adopted measures to promote hand washing, sanitization, and social distancing measures such as lockdowns and restrictions on the flow of people and goods across and within national borders. These amplified the direct international demand side and supply side economic shocks of the pandemic. Exports and imports were reduced, which affected the prices of goods and services, the balance of trade of countries and the inflation rates. Foreign direct investment was also undermined. The severity of the economic effects on different industries varied across different sectors. The financial sector, for instance, which could more easily respond with online operations and work-from-home arrangements, typically fed better than restaurants and the tourism industries. Purchasing masks, other personal protective equipment and sanitization of public places resulted in additional costs to the fiscus, companies and individual households. Governments responded with business support and employment support measures, which increased public sector expenditure, deficits, debt, while tax revenues plummeted. Social relief measures such as social grants and other forms of income replacement were implemented to compensate for widespread loss of life and livelihoods. As workers were put on short time or were retrenched, unemployment soared. In most countries, the unskilled workers with the least digital access and digital literacy and the informal sector were hardest hit, as were black and women-headed households. In this regard, South Africa was no exception. The social impacts of the pandemic included closure of schools, religious and cultural events, and NGOs deemed non-essential. International cooperation arrangements with other countries on the African continent and beyond were established to secure a coordinated approach to the production and distribution of vaccines such as COVAX, with complex geopolitical dynamics around powerful countries jostling to place their citizens first in the queue for vaccines. The successive waves and variants of the coronavirus saw rising numbers of South African COVID-19 infections and deaths rise, particularly among the elderly and those with comorbidities like diabetes, 
the vaccine rollout was delayed and then the pace of implementation was disappointingly slow, especially in rural areas. South Africa's economy was battered by both the direct economic effects of the pandemic and the indirect economic effects associated with our lockdown, travel restrictions, curfews and other measures to curb contagion. Widespread retrenchments in South Africa, loss of livelihoods in the formal and informal sectors and business insolvency due to ill health and death impacted different economic sectors in varying degrees and also macroeconomic aggregates such as GDP, economic growth rate, inflation and the exchange rate. Sectors such as healthcare were particularly hard hit as well as customer facing industries such as retail or transport while e-commerce such as online shopping, on the other hand, boomed. The incidence of infections and death differed across provinces and municipalities, creating spatially differentiated economic impacts depending on the mix of economic activities located in a particular area, with very different outcomes in rural and urban areas. South Africa too experienced the indirect health effects of COVID-19 cases crowding out treatments of other diseases or health promotion measures. Certain sectors were designated essential during lockdown and could continue to operate, such as food production, public and private security and telecommunications, while others, such as tobacco and alcohol industries, could not. Imports of machinery equipment and other production inputs and exports were curtailed, interrupting the supply chains of various domestic industries. Discretionary income in South African households declined due to fewer working hours and increased retrenchments, which depressed domestic aggregate demand, consumption and household savings. The pandemic and responses to it also had profound effects on poverty and inequality, on vulnerable groups such as the poor, children, youth, women and the disabled. South Africa, one of the most unequal societies in the world, became even more so. The pandemic triggered greater collaboration between the public sector and the private sector, such as medical aids, and across the national, provincial and local spheres of government and innovations such as the Department of Health's COVID Alert app and the Electronic Vaccination Data System Self-Registration Portal. These are just a few of the complex interacting public health and economic drivers of the devastating economic effects of the coronavirus pandemic. During the Public Economics Winter School, we'll unpack these dilemmas in greater detail and focus on recovery strategies.